This first little video will provide you with some important details that you need to know when you're ready to upload your student content to the Kids Guide to Canada website. The artifact entry form is written in both English and French, and whatever you write is exactly what's going to appear with your artifact on the Kids Guide to Canada website. The name of your school will appear, however your name and your email address won't. This is simply to help us ensure that only registered participants post artifacts to the project. So it's very important that you use the same work email address that you used to register. We've included a class identifier question to allow teachers who teach more than one class to identify to which class a particular artifact belongs. Since many students in Canada live in towns and cities, questions E and F ask you to identify the name of your neighborhood if you live in a larger community. Students can check on a map, or they could even ask their parents if they're not sure if their neighborhood even has a name. Question G asks everyone to identify the treaty or traditional lands on which our communities are located. Many governments and school districts now provide this information, but if you don't know the answer, we've provided a website which will at least give you the basic information. If you click on the link in the question, it will take you to nativelands.ca, where all you have to do is enter your location in the search tool. The website will then tell you on whose land your community is located, although you might be able to find more accurate and detailed information through your own local resources. Unfortunately, because of the way the map search tool works, we're only able to list straight grades. So if you teach a split grade class, it's with our apologies that we ask you to choose the grade that best represents your class. The grade level of each artifact will then appear as a different color and symbol on the map for easy visual identification. Please note the question J asks you to identify the language of the artifacts your students have created. If you choose multiple, please identify the language included under other in the next question. The topic question also includes an option called multiple topics. If you're providing a link to many different student works, please list a couple of the main topics under other in the next question to help other children know if there's something there of interest. The format of the artifacts won't be searchable, but will appear in your information box. Please note that the descriptive paragraph question has a 1,000 character limit, which isn't very long and is going to limit you to a brief intro to your local neighborhood. If you're providing a link to another website where your student works are posted, you'll need to copy and paste the URL address of that website. And if you have more than one link to provide, you can either paste them into the community paragraph question, or you can complete a separate artifact entry for each different link. The last four questions ask you to verify that you have made sure that all four requirements have been met. You have signed parental consent forms. No full student names have been used. Students haven't used copyright content without permission and they've provided proper attribution for any content they've used. We don't have a limit on the number of forms a class fills out, but please try to keep it maximum of three to five. The next little video will provide you with details on uploading photographs and locating your artifacts on the map. When you're finished and you've clicked Submit, any unanswered questions will be highlighted in red, and you'll have to go back and answer them before your artifact will be accepted. When you finally submitted your artifact, a confirmation screen will appear. If you have any other questions, please email the national team and we'll get back to you as soon as possible.